Hello everyone, Frost here. Welcome back to a new Classic WoW video. In every MMO there are rare items that people are willing to pay huge amounts of gold for, or sometimes even real money. Classic WoW is abundant in such treasures and today we're going to discuss 7 of them, explaining where to obtain and why they worth so much. This should serve as a piece of information, a little bit of knowledge to carry with you in the upcoming Classic release because it would be a shame to find yourself in a position owning one of these items and not knowing the value of it. Knowledge is power, and power is to be wielded wisely. Without further ado, let's explore. First pick in our list is the Freezing Band, one iconic vanilla WoW item that is highly desired by mages. A level 47 epic ring that can be obtained as a world drop with passive 10 frost resistance, 14 frost spell power that will get buffed to plus 21 in later patches, and finally the magic behind this item, 1% chance of inflicting 50 frost damage to the attacker and freezing them for 5 seconds. The estimated price for a freezing band is anywhere between 400 and 800 gold, depending on your server's economy. And you might think that you could buy an epic mount for that amount of gold, and that's correct if you're the one selling it because no sane mage would sell an item like this. In early vanilla, the Freezing Band is best in slot both PvE and PvP, which partly justifies the high price other than just being rare. But where it really shines, it's in PvP. The frost damage and the frost resistance is obviously nice, but the proc is simply amazing. If spec'd deep into the frost tree, the proc will benefit from the shatter talent, which gives an extra 50% chance to crit against frozen targets. Not only that, but compared to Frost Nova, the Freezing Band proc will not break upon damage. This opens possibilities for Arcane Frost hybrid specs focused on Presence of Mind and Cold Snap where you could kill almost anyone in a couple of seconds. You might still be skeptic about the price of this item, but keep in mind, Freezing Band does not have an internal cooldown, which means you can proc two enemies at the same time, or proc twice in the same fight. On top of this, the item is not unique and you can wear two of them, increasing not only your spell power and frost resistance against other mages, but your chances for a multiple proc. The only place where the band does not shine is in AoE farming, as while you try to gather mobs and make piles, some of them will get trapped into the ice block animation, screwing up your pool, which will end into a corpse run. Nevertheless, the blizzard spell does not benefit that much from spell power, and having some stamina intellect rings would be more efficient. Edge Master Hand Guards. The name of the gloves serves as a direct reference for the Edge Master character from Soul Calibur series of games. Edge Master had a mysterious past, he was renowned for his skill with various weapons, and his past and real name were known only to himself. In World of Warcraft, Edge Master handguards are level 44 epic male gloves with plus 7 weapon skills. These gloves are highly desired by Fury Warriors due to the reduction of the glancing blow penalty from weapon skill bonuses. They are purely PvE gloves with an average price between 700 and 1000 gold, which is insane for Vanilla WoW, but apparently people are willing to pay. To understand why people are spending fortunes on the gloves, we first have to understand the vanilla weapon skill. On top of the 27% chance to miss, which comes as a default for dual wielding, there are also glancing blows. A glancing blow is a normal white hit against a monster of higher level than yourself that cannot crit and deals reduced damage. You will always have 40% chance to land a glancing blow against a boss and these hits will only deal 70% of normal hits damage. What extra weapon skill does is reduce the amount of damage lost by glancing blows. There is no real or correct information what one point of weapon skill does, but in order to make it easier to understand, we will say that one weapon skill increases the percentage amount of damage done by glancing blows by 3. For example, keep in mind this is just a theory based on the available information. A glancing blow with 300 weapon skill against a raid boss will only deal 70% of the damage. A glancing blow with 301 weapon skill against a raid boss will deal 73% of the damage. 
Some people say that the required weapon skill to neutralize glancing blows is 310, and some people say it's 315. Nevertheless, I believe we got a good understanding of who the buyers of this item are. PvE elitists in big guilds, DPS meter maniacs, and of course the auction house entrepreneurs. The fame of Edgemaster handguards went even into the Burning Crusade, known as Best in Slot Leveling Gloves. Flask Recipes In vanilla, flasks were designed to be the strongest form of consumables, at least most of them. The Flask of Titans offered 1200 HP, Distillated Wisdom 2000 mana, and Supreme Power 150 spell power. All this lasting for 2 hours with its effect persisting through death. There is no secret, alchemists made a lot of gold from crafting the flask, but one thing stood between an average and a rich alchemist, the flask recipes. Well, maybe the black lotus as well, but that's a different story. Like every other good thing in vanilla, flask recipes were pretty rare and hard to come by. They dropped from 3 bosses in 3 different dungeons. Distillated wisdom dropped from Balnazar in Stratholme, Supreme Power dropped from Rest Frost Whisper in Scholomance, and the Flask of Titans dropped from General Drakisat in Upper Blackrock Spire. The estimated drop chance for each flask recipe according to the internet is about 3%, but I kind of doubt it as I run these dungeons countless times and barely have any memories of seeing them on the loot table. Early vanilla, the prices of the recipes can go pretty high as alchemists try to monopolize the flask market with their own prices. Distillated wisdom being the least useful out of the three can go from 200 to 400 gold, supreme power between 300 and 600 gold, and titans could go anywhere between 600 and 1200 gold. Trying to obtain the recipes is harder not because of the low drop chance, but mostly because you will be running the dungeons with 4 other people or 9 other people in UBRS. And in the odd event that one will drop, there will always be an alchemist among you trying to claim his birthright to the recipe, even if he has it learned already. On top of this, I'm almost sure that classic WoW general chat will be spammed with messages like looking for group scholomance, flask recipe reserved. The flask recipes in upcoming classic will be the subject of tons of drama, do your best to stay away from it. Ace of Beast or the Darkmoon card, Blue Dragon. This piece of jewel is from vanilla days when casters barely had any mana regeneration in combat. Trinkets like this were the way to go, and Blue Dragon was one of the best healing trinkets in game. Although some Shadow Priests and Affliction Warlocks found a way to use it as a DPS trinket, since mana issues was not a topic locked only for healers. Like many other items with proc chances in vanilla, the Darkmoon card seemed not to have any internal cooldown, and according to some old bug reports it used to proc even from crafting bandages. This trinket proc is called Aura of the Blue Dragon, which has a 2% chance per successful spellcast to bypass the 5 second rule. Usually, a successful spell cast prevents mana regeneration from spirit for 5 seconds. Any caster, especially those that use quick spells like Flash Heal or Flash of Light, might find themselves almost always inside a 5 second rule, and thus rarely regenerating any mana from their spirit. This trinket is most useful for casters who require constant mana, who have high amount of spirit, and where the trinket really shines is in long and intense fights. In order to obtain this trinket, you have to collect 8 cards of the beast and make them into a deck that will start a quest. I guess you're pretty familiar with this. The cards from 2 to 8 are easy to find, especially on the auction house where if you have patience you could get them for a decent price. As for the ace of beast, which is the rarest and the most important card of the deck, you'll only get it from the beast in lower blackrock spire with 5% drop chance and another 9 people that will need it for their alts. Most people will end up scanning the auction house for the Ace of Beast or for the Beast deck to avoid any inconveniences, ending up spending anywhere between 400 to 800 gold for either the Ace or the complete deck. Some people remain skeptical about this trinket, 
but I believe the skepticism comes from lack of information and minor understanding on how and when to use the trinket. Lionheart Helm and Titanic Leggings Recipes Two plants that provide best-in-slot plate DPS items for all of the vanilla timeline. Although you could probably acquire better leggings in Naxxramas, the point still stands. Early vanilla, these plants were very rare and the lucky blacksmiths who got their hands on them were set for making a lot of gold without too much effort. Due to the rarity of the plants, people asked for enormous crafting fees from 50 to even 150 gold. The poor warriors and the misunderstood red paladins were faced with gathering mats worth 500 gold plus for a single item, but even with the fee wall, nothing stopped those brave warriors to acquire their dream items. One Arcanite bar every day because the journey of a thousand miles begins with first step. The plans usually dropped from world bosses and with a very low chance from high level elites in UBRS, Stratholme and Molten Core Trash. It's really hard to estimate the price for them due to people rarely selling them on the auction house, but I assume the normal price would be a thousand gold plus. Although if you find yourself owning one of these plants, think twice before you sell it, as giving it to a friend or a guild member might be more impactful on the long run. Green Items the high level green items, usually above level 55, used to have a random bonus upon drop. A system where if the RNG gods were in your favor, you could have hit the jackpot, obtaining an item with a value from 500 to 3000 gold. I'm talking about offhands, bracers, cloaks, and wands imbued with spell power or healing power. Most valuable were the Shadow Wrath, Frozen Wrath, and the Ultimate was a green wand of healing where the RNG could have gone up to plus 33 healing power. The wand remained best in slot for the whole iteration of vanilla and even midway through Burning Crusade. While most people remain skeptical about wearing a green item over a beautiful epic, the few skilled and informed were willing to pay thousands of golds for such an item. It might sound crazy to pay a fortune for a couple of spell power increase, but it was not only about that. Back in vanilla there used to be a 3.5 seconds rule to spell power, meaning that if a spell had a 3.5 seconds cast time, it would have benefited 100% from your spell power. A 2.5 second cast spell would have scaled with about 85% and a flash shield for example only with 43%. The green items imbued with spell power bypassed the 3.5 second rule and quick cast spells like flash shield were getting a 100% spell coefficient. This is why some green items with the right amount of spell power were overpowered and became sought after by dedicated players. Tibu's Blazing Longsword This sword is displayed in the inner cover of World of Warcraft retail box worn by a level 60 dwarf warrior named Hammerfall. The sword, compared to other glowing items, actually generated a light source, much like the offhand lanterns and torches. Most weapons that glow are fully visible in the dark, but they don't actually illuminate the surrounding area. Not so with this weapon. It casts a warm light into your character, nearby walls and objects. Although in vanilla this was not the reason why people desired this item. Famous because its rarity and slow speed, before patch 1.8, instant attacks such as Sinister Strike, Mortal Strike benefited a lot from slow weapons with high outburst damage. Also, some classes could generate extra attacks through things like Wind Fury, Sword Specialization, Hand of Justice and so on, making a slow weapon netting more damage per second compared to a fast weapon. To give you an example, a sword with 2.8 speed and 100 to 200 damage would hit harder than a sword with 2.6 speed and 100 to 200 damage, even though they have the same listed damage. This created some weird situation where random blue items with unusually slow speeds were better than raid epics. Tibu Blazing Longsword was one of the slow weapons desired specially by Hemorogues pre-attack power normalization. 
halfway through Vanilla the Sword was so rare that it only dropped from high level dungeons such as UBRS and Molten Core Trash. It was only when AQ came and high level elites 60 plus were available in Silitus making the sword become slightly more available. The estimated price would be around a thousand plus gold, but in Classic WoW I'm pretty sure some of them will sell for even more. Thanks for watching, I realized these are just a couple of rare and expensive items that came through my mind. And Vanilla WoW has many more treasures than we could fit in a 7 items list. I hope you enjoyed, if you did make sure to drop a like or a comment down below. Until next time, stay frosty.